All right, now um, let's uh, expand our, our five heads, boys. Today is Educational Monday. And we're watching The Deadliest Virus. It's by uh, Kurz, we'll see if it's good or not. It's a new video. Thousands of chicken heads rained from the sky in Europe, making foxes and other wildlife confused and very happy. Why? They were filled with a vaccine to fight the deadliest virus known to humanity. Since the 1930s, a rabies epidemic had been sweeping across wildlife populations in Europe, and humans wanted to finally get rid of the virus once and for all. Rabies is named after Lyssa, the ancient Greek spirit of mad rage, and has been haunting us for at least 4,000 years. It can turn animals into angry beasts and humans into zombies Europe. that fear water. No? Okay. But what makes Lyssa fascinating is not just how bizarre and Rain's deadly luck. its infection is, but also how incredibly good it is at avoiding our defenses. Chat, if you catch, guys, guys, where I'm, where I'm from, and uh, in, uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is all, friend, uh, all French people. It, it's called the rage. We call it the rage. Viruses exist on the edge between life and death. Hardly more than a few genetic instructions. Wait, if you get it, you die. Need living cells to multiply. The Lyssa virus is simple even for a virus. It has only five genes, that is, the instructions for five proteins that let it solve complex problems. Infect a mammal, avoid its immune system, travel to its... Okay, your five hours will be safe if you, get, if you get the rage, okay? Somebody says it. Uh, but you get like a, like a long, long-lasting problems and damage if you, if you are, if, even if you get cured? Or is it pretty, is, is it pretty easy? Brain, make more of itself and infect new hosts. Let's see what happens if you get infected. It all starts with a bite, most likely by a dog carrying millions of viruses in its oh, saliva, gonna watch. pushing them deep into the tissue. The goal is your nerve cells, your neurons. They are living electrochemical wires, transferring signals throughout your body and can stretch for up to one and a half meters with their cellular machinery on one end and a terminal on the other. The terminal is where cells talk to each other, bypassing chemicals that convey information. Lesser probably binds to the receptors that are crucial for this process and slips inside the unsuspecting nerve cells. Inside, the virus has to solve a big problem. It needs to get to the cellular machinery to take over the cell and make more viruses, and because neurons are pretty long, this can be far away. There is a solution at hand, though. Cells have microtubules spanning their insides that give them structural integrity, but they also provide a track system for a specialized well, nerve cell, delivery right? system. Dynion motors are actual motors that use energy and deliver packages. They're made from 50 different proteins, 10 times more than the virus, and look like a little pair of shoes. Lissa uses one of its five proteins to hijack this amazing system and order it to head for the nucleus. What's the immune system doing to prevent all of that? Well, guys, yeah, guys, how are such small things so advanced and use strategies and things that are so incredibly intricate? I don't get it. How do such small, be, small little little things, okay, do such absolutely insane, crazy shit, man? Fortunately, not much. Millions of years of evolution. Usually, okay. when a virus attacks, your civilian cells are crucial in activating your immune response. Okay. They notice that they've been infected and release hundreds of thousands of a special family of proteins. The interferons that, well, interfere with viruses. We'll have to simplify a lot, but in a nutshell, interferons alert your immune system to make antivirus weapons. But they do much more. They tell civilian cells to turn down their protein factories for a while, which means that viruses can't replicate efficiently anymore. And interferons tell your cells to become super transparent, which is important because how can your immune cells notice that your civilian cells are infected when viruses hide inside them? Your body solves this by oh, creating display windows into their insides called MHC class 1 molecules. Cells constantly produce stuff to stay alive, and to showcase to your immune cells what's going on inside them, they take random samples of their products and put them into these tiny display windows to give a peek inside. Interferons tell your cells to make way more display with I know what's more impressive that these things do that or that we we were able to figure out that it, that's what it does those and become super transparent If a cell is infected and forced to make virus parts your immune cells will see these Both. parts in a window Both And then. order the infected cell to kill itself and all the viruses trapped within This is one of the most powerful methods of wiping out a viral infection 
Unfortunately, Lissa blocks your neurons from making interferons and stays basically invisible to your immune system. In contrast to many other viruses, when it replicates, it doesn't kill its host, which would also trigger alarm systems. Instead, it stealthily jumps from neuron to neuron, very slowly making its way to your brain. This phase can take weeks to months and very rarely even years and depends on a bunch of things Wait, like if the bite was in your face or foot or how many viruses got into your muscles. Lissa is a patient monster. Until it reaches its goal, your brain stand. Finally, the immune system catches on that something isn't right and reacts. It dispatches some of your most powerful antivirus cells, killer T cells, to seek and kill infected cells and wipe out the enemy. In other viral infections, this would be a turning point, but in rabies, the T cells are rushing towards their doom. Simple Lissa, with its five proteins, plays a you know reverse card, using the immune system's ingenuity against itself. Your central nervous system is a very fragile part of your body, and so the immune system has to be very careful. A few haywire immune cells in your brain is a quick way to die. So they aren't free to enter your nervous system, they have to be invited in and can be kicked out. To protect themselves, your nerve cells can order T cells to self-destruct if they think they're overreacting. And Lissa figured out a way to make infected neurons express this order. So as your powerful defense cells arrive, they are ordered to commit suicide. Now the virus infiltrates the huh? brainstem. Once this stage is reached, you are going to die. How Lissa kills. One of the most irritating things about the Lissa virus is that we still don't know exactly how and why an infected person dies. Wait, wait, wait. What if you, what if you get bit like in the neck then? Or if you get bit at the skull level? Is it GG? It's gonna, it's gonna move like... Really fast? Our usual idea of viruses causing damage is by multiplying rapidly, killing their host cells once they've made enough copies, triggering a massive immune reaction that also does a lot of damage. But this doesn't seem to be what happens here. Brain tissue of rabies patients shows minimal, sometimes non-existent damage. Instead of murdering everything in sight, it's currently thought that Lissa wreaks havoc by messing up the neuron communication inside your brain, so much so that it can't function anymore. This leads to symptoms like confusion, aggression, and paralysis. Now the virus begins to leave. Still traveling through neurons, it migrates away from the brain and heads for the salivary glands. This is remarkable because after traveling in one direction, the virus reverses its course. After decades of study, we don't know how this works. Lissa ends up saturating your saliva, ready for the irate mammal to bite another and repeat the cycle. While this seems like the beginning of a zombie outbreak, luckily there are no known cases of a human biting another and spreading rabies this way. Because it doesn't get there, now, it dies before, no? the end is near. You are rapidly developing encephalitis, a swelling of the brain with many unpleasant neurological symptoms, from lethargy to paralysis. And then you die. Slowly at first, and then suddenly, organ after organ fails as you slip into a coma. There is no known effective therapy. Barely anyone has ever survived Lissa once symptoms begin to show. It is by far the deadliest virus we know. Except, yeah. there is actually... Because because it doesn't get there, right? Does it, does it... No? Something that could save you. Did people die before? Rabies was one of the first diseases humans developed a vaccine for. As vaccines do, it prepares your immune system for a future attack, so it has the right weapons ready in high numbers. The horrific tricks of simple Lissa don't work once you are vaccinated. And the vaccine is special for another reason. Because Lissa is so slow in the first few weeks, it can be given to you after you've been exposed. So you can still be vaccinated after you've been bitten by oh. an which I get it. I get it because if it if it starts over here and it goes to the fucking to the fucking nerve cells, right? And it go, builds up. You can take it and then it, it builds whatever. And at one point when it's actually ready, it's probably not even not even there yet. It gets like to the halfway through and the body's ready and then it starts fighting back and then boom and then, and then you win. Which is super important if you've had contact with a sick wild animal, say a bat, because you often don't even notice a bite from tiny teeth. Interesting. Rabies is a monster. One that has followed our species around for thousands of years, that our ancestors were terrified of, and rightly so. It still kills around 60,000 people each year, almost half of them children. We are far from- I wonder who has a lot of ties in these vaccines in the Matrix. 
Black rock. Black rock. From eradicating this monster, <laughs> it lurks in the shadows, in forests and animals of all kinds, ready to return in greater numbers if we ever forget how to keep it at bay or if we continue the trend of being suspicious of vaccines. Let's hope that one day humanity slays this monster so it can become, like most monsters, part of our imagination. There are much deeper levels of knowledge to explore about rabies than the glimpse we just showed you. But digging into sources and scientific information yeah, on your own... Question though, guys, since with the vaccine though, isn't it like not priority at all to like try to eradicate it? It's like there's like small efforts I would assume here and there or whatever. But since, since the vaccine is so effective and so good, right? Right? It's not really a problem problem. It can be intimidating. So we've partnered with our friends from Brilliant to create an interactive course with hands-on lessons to guide you through some of the concepts we showed Six, in this video. 60,000 deaths per year. Huh? Oh, Brilliant is an interactive learning tool with over 60 courses in maths, science, and computer science. They make science accessible with a hands-on approach. Think of it as a one-on-one -on -one tutoring version of a course design. Sixty for a year. You'll experiment with how fast the virus can reach your brain based on its protein makeup, or run simulations on rabies. Is that in the video? I didn't. I didn't listen. To explore I was waiting for mutations created the deadly virus we know today. You can do things like manipulate energy cool. to see how good. black holes are formed, or control the expansion of space video. itself to determine yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll the ultimate fate I'll look in of the, the universe. To get some behind-the-scenes science code, guys, guys, it was, it was like, oh, you did a, a nerd emoji, whatever. Guys, this guinea pig, I have a lot of good. Videos. I always say this every time because I, 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 there are some things I like a lot, and one thing is these guys make really, really good videos. They have a bunch of insane ones. Some of them are simple, some of them are complicated. I think some of their simple ones. That are more philosophical. I like them. I think they're fucking dank. I think they're super dank. I think they're VR really, they're man. really good. Blackrock is a financial giant. We've seen them uh, before, though. We've seen all of them.